All right, guys, I just got back from yard selling. Uh, I was out for from 7 a.m. until now, which is about 12. I was out there for five hours. I went to probably, I think, 13 yard sales. Uh, there wasn't a ton of them, but 13 is a good amount. Um, while I was out there, I thought of this video that I could share with you guys, which I'm labeling three or four or five. I don't know how many tips I'll end up sharing. But these psychological tips that you can use at garage sales to lower your cost of goods to get things for cheaper so that way you can sell them for more. So diving right into it, the first tip is never ask how much something is with the brand name attached to it. For example, never ask, hey, how much do you want for this Callaway driver? You go up to them and you just say, hey, how much are your golf clubs? And then if they say, oh, which particular one do you have? You can show them and they'll, they'll tell you, oh, I want 15. They may see that it's Callaway and be like, oh, for that one, I want 50. But you just show them what it is. You never actually say, hey, how much do you want for this um, Callaway Big Bertha vintage driver that um, you can't really find in stores anymore? <laughs> They're going to be like, oh. <laughs> and that's obviously an exaggeration, but just attaching the brand to something increases how much you're going to have to pay for it, typically. So another example, you don't want to go up and say, hey, how much do you want for this Polo Ralph Lauren shirt? You just say, how much are your shirts? And usually they'll say 50 cents or a dollar. But if you lead with Polo Ralph Lauren or or a bigger brand or, or even higher end brands, people will be like, oh, subconsciously they'll be like, oh, that sounds like it's worth more. Maybe I can, maybe, maybe he really wants it. Maybe I can get some more money for it. So don't talk about the brand, just talk about the item. How much is this tennis racket? How much are the shoes? How much are these shirts? And then uh, you'll be able to lower that cost of goods. Tip number two, this is a really cool one. When you go into a yard sale, if there's a few things that you can see right off the bat that you're like, oh, I'm probably gonna buy those. Find one thing that you may not even want, but you know is gonna be super cheap, like 50 cents or a dollar and say, how much is this? And then when they say a dollar, immediately accept it. Immediately give them that yes. It lets them know subconsciously you're not gonna barter with them. You're not gonna, you're not gonna drag a lot of things out and it lets them know that you're a buyer. So then you can keep getting these small dollar items leading up to the thing that you really want the most. And then let's say that you had your eye on, on like a, on like a really nice, um, golf club, for example, I guess I'm using that twice in one video. You can see that there's this, this really expensive golf club. And if you would have asked for that first, maybe they would have said they wanted 50 bucks for it, but because you've already built that yes momentum, because you've already gotten a ton of things at a really cheap price, subconsciously, they're just gonna bring that price down for you and you're able to get it for a lot cheaper than if you would have went right in and asked for the most expensive item. Tip number three, each time I walk up to a yard sale, I always immediately say good morning or good afternoon if it's obviously the afternoon, but I do the most majority of my yard selling in the morning because the early bird gets the worm. I guess that's a tip in itself. Uh, get there before everybody else and you'll get everything that they can't. So, but yeah, anyway, this tip is when I walk up to a yard sale, I immediately greet them with a decent volume, with confidence, good morning. And then I immediately say a joke. Um, this is kind of a skill that you gotta develop over time. Sometimes it's gonna be awkward or sometimes you're just really not that funny of a person, but you don't have to be. Um, the easiest joke is a lot of people wear sports memorabilia, not memorabilia, sports wear. Um, so like you'll see guys wearing cowboy shirts or a Lakers hat, Miami Heat. Um, you'll also see people that have their, you know, MLB apparel, like they got their Dodgers shirts on or things like that. The easiest joke is to just make a sports joke. Um, this morning I went up and a guy was wearing a Packers hat, which was easy. I just go up and I say, good morning, but, uh, you may not be having the best morning because... Aaron Rodgers is with the Jets, and I'm sure that still stings today. <laughs> he laughed. We talked about um, 
we talked about the great career that Aaron Rodgers had, but it still wasn't good enough for that man for him to leave on those terms. So, and then we just started talking, and then he, just, and then I started asking him how much for this, and he's like, ah, take it. I'm like, no, nah, let me give you some money. He's like, no, nah, everything's gonna go. Everything is gonna go to a, uh, what are those called? I go to them every single day. Everything is gonna go to a thrift store anyway, so just take it. And I, I still gave him a few bucks for everything. I only took like three things, but he was gonna give it all to me for free. I just gave him a dollar per item, and they're all gonna sell anywhere from fifteen to twenty-five. So, just being a genuinely fun happy guy that people want to be around is going to go a long way for you not only in yard sales but life in general many doors are going to open up if if you open up um so be funny and charismatic do some jokes other examples of jokes um sometimes my town in particular is growing really fast and so sometimes when i go to a place that has um you can tell the home is older but then you can see newer homes around it. I, I like to ask them, oh, how long were you guys here by yourselves before all the neighbors started moving? And they're always like, oh, man, we've been here for 33 years. And now, uh, just two years ago, now we got neighbors. And we like them, but we were here for the, you know, for the quiet mornings. But those don't exist anymore. You just kind of, you just kind of go back and forth with them. But yeah, just genuinely talk to people and be nice. And you're going to see that price come down. They're gonna take you to the backyard and show you some cool stuff. Um, they'll ask you, what are you looking for? So this morning, I was really nice to this guy. They're moving to Tennessee. Um, I talked about John Morant for a second, you know, all that good stuff. And then he said, so what are you, are you looking for anything? I'm like, oh, I buy a little bit of everything. I'm actually looking for, you know, baseball bats. And he's like, oh, goes inside. He's like, I got a carbon composite one, which is a keyword, I'm talking about keywords. So I got a carbon composite one. Let me go grab it. It comes out. It's a really nice bat worth about 120 bucks. I'm like, what do you want for it? And he's like, oh, you can have them for five bucks. I'm like, sick. Throw that on the eBay shop and we're going to make some money. Just genuinely don't put your head down. Don't be quiet. Go in there. Say it with your chest. Good morning. Say a joke. If, if you feel, if you feel like you uh, have, if, if that's, if that's comfortable for you just learn over time that just be a genuinely nice person, make jokes and, and yeah, doors will open up. Tip number four, this is a pretty common one. Uh, I like to call it the pile. Uh, so kind of piggybacking off of tip number two, you're going to want to grab the smaller autumn items, autumns. You're going to want to grab the smaller items that aren't going to, they aren't going to sell to you, sell to you for as much and say, Hey, so uh, can I start making a pile? The second that you say, hey, can I start making a pile? They get excited because, wow, I'm going to get rid of some stuff. I'm going to give this guy a good deal so I can get rid of even more. Because the majority of people doing yard sales want to get rid of stuff. Uh, that'll lead to the next tip. I'll get that to that in a second. But yeah, get a, get a good amount of things. And then what I like to do is I put everything in the pile. I'm like, okay, you said a dollar for this, two dollars for this, dollar for this. And I throw in an item that's worth a little bit more. And then say, sweet, so how much do you want for all of this? <laughs> I've never heard a pile more than $30. And I've made some piles. <laughs> or like, I'll get a ton of shirts for a dollar each. And I'll get 50 of them sometimes. They'll be like, ah, 20 bucks. You, you just make a pile and then people are just happy to get rid of the stuff. You made your jokes. You were a nice guy. You talked about the weather. You talked about sports. You talked about all that good stuff. You talked about getting up early, making those jokes. You made your pile. Now you have a ton of stuff that you got for super cheap and no one's crappy about it. I kind of led into this one. Another psychological tip is you can literally ask people after, after you've done your warm introduction, after you've made a, made a joke or just, you know, have a small conversation with them, you have a couple of things and then you can literally ask if you don't like the price that they said, you can literally ask them, oh, are you trying to like make some money or are you just trying to get rid of stuff? And a lot of people will say, oh, I'm, I'm actually just getting rid of stuff. And when their mouth says that, it triggers in their brain subconsciously. All right, I got to get rid of this stuff. And so then you ask, okay, sweet. Well, I don't know. 25 sounds like a little, a little much for me. I was, I don't know. What, what, can, can you come down at all? You want them to say the second number as well, if you can. They won't always. They'll be like, oh, well, what's your offer? But if you can get them to say the first number, 
and the second number, you can come in with a third number and they'll almost always say yes or come close to it. So, ah, man, I don't know. I wasn't planning on paying 25 for all this. They'll be like, well, I don't know, could you do 20? I'll be like, yeah, I mean, that's that, that that's around a little closer to what I was wanting to pay. Can you do 15? Almost always they'll say yeah to 15 if you've done the prep work to get there. If you just straight up ask them for $25 worth of stuff, say, hey, can I have it for 15? They're usually going to say no. But if you were warm and friendly, made your jokes, made your pile, you can ask them, hey, I was I was thinking more along the lines of 10 or 15. They're like, yeah, okay, I don't care. Let's just get rid of it. So yeah, ask them. Sometimes people will say, I'm looking to make money. And you can say, all right, no worries. Well, I was going to offer you 15, but it sounds like that's not going to work out. And usually they'll say, no, it's not. Or they'll even be like, yeah, you know what? Just take it for 15. I don't mind. So yeah, those are a couple uh, tips that you guys can use to lower your cost of goods. So you can buy more inventory for cheaper. You can make more profit. You can keep that eBay ball rolling. While we're on the topic of psychology, if you want to improve your businesses, your relationships, study human psychology. Psychology is one of the biggest uh, game changers when it comes to business and relationships. And the psychology of this video is going to upset some people. A lot of people are going to be like, oh, you, you're so rude. Like people are just trying to sell their stuff and make a dollar for it. And you're coming in and you're taking all their stuff for super cheap and you're selling it for way more than it's worth. That's so rude. And, and I'm just like, listen, I actually don't think that it's a, a rude thing. I don't think what resellers do is, is a bad thing by any means. There's, there's pros and cons to everything that you do, but we're, we're repurposing things that we're just going to go in the trash anyway. Um, we're getting things to people that like, you know, especially when it comes to vintage things, we're getting collectors and, and different people, things that they've been looking for for a long time that they just couldn't find. And now we're able to be that facilitator to get them their item. Hi, Scout. So yeah, I mean, like reselling is, it's, it's an awesome thing. It, it can bless sellers' lives. It can bless buyers' lives. It can bless people's lives that are just trying to get rid of their stuff. And, and they don't want it to just sit in their house forever, or they don't want it to go sit in a landfill. Um, there's a lot of great things that come from reselling. You just got to look through it through through a lens of, of how it can truly help people. But guys, I'm I'm really just here to to help you guys. Like uh, I'm I'm not here to just give you bits and pieces. Like I, I want to give I want to give everyone an equal playing field in this reseller journey. I want everyone to know all the tips and secrets. There's game changing tips that I, I haven't even gone over yet. Um, I feel like I've already given you guys a lot, and I'm going to continue to give you guys a lot more. I'm just going to try to keep giving you guys as much value as I can in these videos because I know that there's a lot of people out there that could this can really be helpful to and I'm, I'm, I hope that I'm reaching those people and I hope that I'm making a difference in people's lives because I don't know I uh from a young age I just uh, I just want people to be happy and to feel like they're uh, fulfilling themselves and they're helping out there helping their neighbors helping their families so I don't know. Some people may disagree with what I'm doing, um, buying things for cheap and selling them for more. But I mean, that's 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 just business in general. But I really I really hope that uh, that these tips are really helping you guys. And let's go let's go make some money. Let's go change our lives. And then once our lives are changed, or while our lives are changing, let's uh, let's change other people's lives for for the benefit as well. So love you guys. Thanks.